got something on my trees too. I can pull it down. Seven o'clock, the meeting will come to order. I'm Grace Lesbrowns, Cascade Township Supervisor. Clerk Slater, please call the roll. Trustee Nordhook. Here. Trustee McDonald. Here. Supervisor Lesbrowns. Here. Treasurer Pierce. Here. Trustee Kessel. Here. Trustee Shipley. Here. And Clerk Slater. Thank you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Is there discussion or a motion for approval of tonight's agenda? I make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Support. It's a motion by Trustee Shipley, supported by Trustee McDonald to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We have no presentations this evening, so that will take us right into the first public comment section. Mr. Whitley. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were going to the podium. Okay. Anyone wishing to speak in person? Okay. Welcome. Hi, um, I am here on behalf of Tamaran Neighborhood, just putting forth our concern about the deer population and just supporting you guys in um, the efforts to um, look into the deer population and what some options are. Um, just noting dramatic differences in the last few years. We've lived in the same home for 20. It's progressively gotten worse and just incredible in the last couple of years. So. So on behalf of the Tamaran? Well, not officially, asked by the president. She could not be here, so she asked me to come and, and share that our neighborhood is concerned for the safety of our young drivers <laughs> and our property and the deer not looking well and being everywhere. Every time you drive, you see at least one, so. Just for record keeping, can we get your name and address? Please? Yes, Sarah Barnes, 6728 Glen Eagles Drive. Mantra Swayze, do you want to give Ms. Barnes a quick update on where we're at as far as yep. collecting information? So myself and Supervisor Lesperance and our Parks Committee Chair, Ginny Wanti, had an opportunity to meet with Dr. Robert Keyes from Cornerstone University uh, about two weeks ago. Um, so him and his students are uh, volunteering for the cost of a couple packs of batteries, so they're big packs of batteries, <laughs> uh, to start our deer population study. Uh, it will start at Burton Park because um, that's the property that we own, um, and it's a pretty big mm -hmm. um, forested area in the middle of the residential area. So they will work August through December uh, to uh, determine what the deer population is there. That's really the first step of any type of herd control program. Uh, so then we'll be able to take that data uh, and uh, hopefully meet up with a, another organization that can help us put together, if it's warranted, some type mm -hmm. of herd management program. Okay. So unfortunately, it's a slow process. You know, we won't be out there uh, mm -hmm. with arrows or anything tomorrow, but we have started the, right. uh, the first steps in trying to do something. Sounds good. Thank you. And we can't do the count until the fall because of the rut and how the deer come back together as it gets cold, but okay. Sounds we're good. in good hands. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments tonight in person? Sir. My name's Rick Dykema. I, see. I saw you looking at me like you might know me. Uh, I'm, we live two doors down, sorry, 6696 Glen Eagles. We live just down uh, the road from Barnes's. Same thing, we've been there for 10 years. Um, when we first moved in, I was in seminary and would be working on the deck and the deer would walk through and it was cute and fun and look at this. And now there are so many, it's overwhelming. They're wasting away. None of them look healthy. Almost hit one yesterday, um, just driving in the, in the parking lot. Could hear it skidding with my door open next to our window open. So it's just overwhelming. We're glad we're supporting what you're doing and just want to keep that in front of us all. So thanks. Thank you. Hi, Ann England, 3415 Glenstone Court, Southeast. I didn't see Egypt Creek on the agenda, so just wondered if we had an update on that. What was going on Let's with the meeting? Now. Sure, so we had a site visit with them on last Thursday. Um, I think it was Thursday, whatever day, it was super hot. 
because I sweat through all my clothes. Um, but we went out there. Um, he gave us a, a, a tour around it. We were able to take some pictures, uh, get a better idea of what's going on uh, at the property. Um, so our um, planning team, uh, Madison and Brian, are working on a follow-up letter to him. Um, there are some things that we have, you know, very big concerns about uh, how he is using the property and really property and related to the uh, regulated wetlands. Um, he did commit to us the next day that he was going to contact Eagle uh, on his own uh, for a site visit. So we'll see if he does that. Um, but we have some concerns that we'll reiterate in that letter. Uh, then on top of that, we reiterated all of the township ordinances we feel are being violated uh, to make sure that uh, nothing is uh, that won't continue things like the noise and the light and so on. So. Okay, that is continuing. So I, it was my understanding I wasn't here for the last meeting I was out of town, but I thought that Brian said he was being regulated by the normal business hours of seven to 10, even though he's in a residential area. Correct. Yeah, because they, not necessarily him, but they've been in there at 530 in the morning and within the last week for sure, like after 10 o'clock at night, because the lights come into our house and wake us up. So just wondering what the process is, if he's not following those guidelines, what yeah. What's so, the protocol? Yeah, so we, we can't be out there all the time. So we certainly need to partner with you guys to. Right. But um, we don't want to call you at 530 in the morning. Those. So just, you can just wondering what the protocol is. You can certainly email us at 530, though. So any, uh, <laughs> okay. any documentation that you uh, can get would uh, uh, suffice as well. Okay. Um, for specific noise ordinance issues, um, we recommend you call the non-emergency sheriff's department line. Uh, they Yeah, been this is just lights. Of the, of the problems that we've been having. So but okay. uh, I, I'll follow up with you tomorrow um, so okay. we can. Okay, uh, have kind yeah. Of and it was our understanding too from that letter and maybe this is not correct, but he was meant to to put that property back to the way it was when he took it over in 2013. So that's something Eagle is going to have to coordinate. Okay. Um, I'm worried that he could do more damage to the protected wetlands. We're, we're worried about that too. We're so that's thinking not someone that else willing would to need oversee, to do that. Uh, which is why we're continuing to pressure Eagle to come to the site and put together a plan for him. Okay. And then you said there's someone else that's overseeing enforcement, Madison? Her name is Madison. Yes. Okay. Is that someone that we should be contacting? So I will, um, I think some of your neighbors already met with her, um, mm -hmm. but I will do all of the formal introductions tomorrow. And we'll talk about how to make sure there's open lines of communication for the issues that are going on. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Ben. Anyone else in person or virtually? If any of our Zoom participants would like to <coughs> participate during this public comment, please raise your hand. Oh, we have one. Hello? Mr. Merlin, yes, we can hear you. This is Craig Merlin, 6333 Thornhills drive southeast. I just wanted to ask yet again for a list of the projects to which funding has been committed. Um, in looking at the financial statements as of the end of the year, I notice we have assigned, well, we have capital improvements of 2.89 under restricted funding that has been assigned for capital improvements. And we have facility improvements under committed projects. But I'd like to know, as I've asked several times in the past, to know to what money, to what projects money has been committed and set aside. Um, and that's my only question. Andrews, do we have an answer for that right here? We do, yep. Luckily, we have our auditor here, so I will ask him to address that during the presentation. Okay, thank you. If anyone else um, would like to speak on Zoom, please raise your hand. If you are participating via phone, please dial star nine. I'll wait one moment, supervisor. Does not look like anyone else would like to speak. Okay, thanks. Moving on to Article Six, approval of tonight's or excuse me of the consent agenda. Is there a discussion or a motion? 
I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented this evening. Support. It's a motion by Trustee Shipley, supported by Trustee Kessel, to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Financial actions. Is there discussion or a motion? I make a motion to approve the financial actions as uh, presented and prepared by our treasurer. No. No. I didn't approve. I didn't prepare them. Oh, okay. Well, the county prepared them. <laughs> support. Okay. Yeah, support. Okay. I still make a motion to approve it. Sorry, Ken. I thought you were doing that. Just for the public, can you give us the real basic explanation? 22 or 2022 May financial reports for all of us non-financial wizards just yep so the financial report is just a snapshot in time of what our budget looks like so that's a motion by trustee Shipley supported by trustee Kessel yes to approve tonight's financial actions all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carried we have no unfinished business, so Article 9, first item 037-2022, fiscal year 2021 audit and comprehensive annual financial report. Manager Swayze. Yep, so I would like to introduce Doug Vredveld from Vredveld Hafner, uh, who has completed our audit this year, and he's here to give us the review. Thank you. Don't let me forget to answer that question. All right. <laughs> If you do, we're going to give you that his email, <laughs> <laughs> or who'll give him yours? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So first, does everyone have the the draft of the audit in front of them, or so okay? So I thought I'd walk you through a few of the pages first, and, and then I'll go through the the slideshow here. And first of all, thank you to, to staff. Um, we were out here in March and then um, had a few things to clean up and finally got this thing issued. Um, but Liz and Exana and with, with Ben, they answer all of our questions and provide us a ton of information as we walk through this audit process. And at the end of the day, if you go to page one of the draft financial statements, this is as of December 31, 2021 the financial statements, the opinions right in the second paragraph at the top of page one. We form an opinion on the statements and it says the financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the township. So that's a good clean opinion and certainly what you wanna have when you have an audit completed. And then the next, it, as you kind of flip through the, the document, pages five through 10 are, um, the management's discussion and analysis. This is a lot of information provided by staff of the township, and it has some really good um, budgeting information on pages nine and 10 about uh, why the budget changed and what happened. And there's economic factors for next year's budget. So this is a kind of a reading type uh, synopsis of the financial statement. And then pages 11 through 13, this is called the government wide financial statements and kind of corresponds with the first couple slides here. Um, at the bottom of page 11, you can see this is your net position of the city. This takes all of the activity of the city and puts it into full accrual basis. So it kind of looks similar to what a for-profit business would look like. <coughs> and you can see at the bottom, bottom line, your net position or retained earnings, you would call it in for-profit world, is about $42 million. And of that, 6.8 million is unrestricted. Uh, 23 million is invested in capital assets. And if you kind of look about a halfway up the page, one of the big numbers we try to always point out is your net pension liability. This is an actuarially determined amount of 2.2 million. Uh, there are many, many communities that have a very, very large net pension liability. Uh, 2.2 million looks big, but it's not that big compared to to many others. And in fact, your unrestricted net position at many, many communities throughout the country is in a negative or deficit position. You're at a positive 6.8 million. So you're in good shape there. And that the pension that that um, liability is related to was closed in 2018. 
So it's just um, retirees that are still in the plan that are being, being paid out and funded. And then pages, oh, I, I'll, I'll kind of go through the slides as I go through this. So this, this first snapshot is, this is the revenue of all the governmental activities. Just a little, a, a snapshot of where the revenue is coming from, about 54% comes from the property taxes, 18% is from state shared revenue, 24% from charges and so forth. Um, just by comparison, last year, your state shared revenue was about 13%. Uh, this year, we recognized the, um, the census adjustment, which the census was recounted in 2020 and, and uh, Cascade Township got a pretty nice bump from the census adjustment, which has been recognized in these financial statements. And that's what caused that to bump up a little bit. Um, uh, the uh, property tax, I looked at 2020s, and it's exactly 54%. So I had to double check and make sure we didn't make a mistake, but it's exactly the same as a percentage as it was in the previous year. So that's, that's the report there. And then this is just another snapshot of this income statement, which is on pages 12 and 13 I'm looking at. And what this is looking at is your expenses compared to program or direct revenues associated with each of the uh, um, governmental activities. You can see there that um, you know, program revenues and public safety is up, uh, covers some of the expenses at least, and that's primarily your inspection fees, which is included in public safety. And other than that, most of the activity here, what this shows you is what's covered by property taxes and state shared revenue, which are considered general revenue. So that's kind of where, where the money goes. Okay, and then pages, the next several pages are your fund basis financial statements, pages 14 through uh, 20. Oh, I'm sorry, I had one more slide on net assets and governmental activities. Just a historical look at, at your invested in capital. You can see that's been going up over the last several years. The restricted money has been coming down slightly and unrestricted is basically staying pretty steady there. Okay, sorry about that. Now this is uh, pages 14 through 20. This is your fund basis financial statements. Um, only things I wanted to point out there are on, on the bottom of page 14, the left-hand column there is your general fund. You can see unassigned fund balance of 5.9 million, which is very good. And right up above that is uh, the amount committed for facility improvements, which, which um, was alluded to in the call 248,000. I would have to do some searching to figure out exactly what projects that's for Ben. I don't really that is actually left over from the Township Hall project, so it needs to be uncommitted. Um, at at so, some point. Yeah, we'll do that during the next budget amendment. Okay. Yeah, so the, the board commits it, the board has to uncommit it. So it's just leftover money that's there. And then uh, the other funds he was mentioning, I'm looking. Restricted for capital improvements, there's 2.8 million way in the very right hand side of page 15 there. 2.8 million restricted for capital improvements. And that is in your non major funds. A small amount of that is for the dam repair money that, that's set aside for dam repair. And the other is. It's from the infrastructure revolving fund. From, yeah, the improvement revolving fund of 2.2 million is in there. A half, half million roughly is from the, the dam repair, which is money received that's specifically separate, That's for not that. in the dam fund? The, the half million is, is, in the, is in the dam repair fund. Which is, the, is there only one so the, fund for the way, dam? The way it appears issues? in the uh, financial statements, basically the non-tax funds are all kind of combined. They're called non-major funds. Mm -hmm. So when you have that restricted, uh, that includes the money that's in the uh, dam fund. It includes the money that's in the IRF, the infrastructure revolving fund. And those are restricted by the nature of those funds. So the township has actually said, this is for a specific project. Because it's in the dam fund, it's automatically restric restricted for dam activities. Because it's in the infrastructure revolving fund, it's automatically restricted for infrastructure improvements. You can see the detail of that back on page 53 if you're interested in seeing that. Okay, I was ad-libbing there, so let's see. Um, 
in the general fund, I mentioned the, there's 5.9 million in un, unassigned fund balance. And then flipping over to page, page 18. Yeah, I don't think we need to, well, the bottom line on page 18, probably a better place to go is page 41, which is your budget to actual. This shows the real highlights in the general fund. So in the general fund, Budget to actual on page 41, you can see the bottom line for the general fund was a negative 142,000 this year, which isn't bad. I mean, it decreased a little bit, but it was budgeted to, de to decrease about 977,000. So you actually finished 800,000 ahead of your budget. Uh, part of that was because of unexpected revenue related to that census adjustment. And the rest, the, the bigger pieces of it were, were related to some deferred road and construction maintenance and other capital outlay items that were budgeted but didn't occur during the, the year. So that, that was on that. And then this these couple slides here on just the general fund, this is a picture of your general fund revenues. And you can see the taxes have just been a steady increase over the last several years. State shared, like I mentioned a couple times, went took a little bit of a jump, that's the blue bar there, took a little jump this year. And then uh, the other revenue, the, the decrease there is primarily in interest income. So the, there's been, interest has been down for quite a while, but now some of these uh, long-term um, CDs and treasuries are starting to mature. So now you're recognizing a lot of that and, and having to reinvest at lower rates. So unfortunately that's, that's going down now. And then this is, I have a couple slides on general fund here. The expenditures, you can see that they kind of jump all over the place based on, on the capital outlay that occurs in each of the areas. And uh, last year's capital outlay item there was very high because of a couple building purchases. And this year, the capital outlay was primarily the, um, the city hall build out. Uh, there was a there's a vehicle. Yeah, my book's a little messed up here. Yeah, the, uh, oh, a fire storage building and then the purchase of Wycliffe Drive was also included in there this year. Um, by way of, well, finish the general fund first. Um, general fund unassigned. So I mentioned the unassigned fund balance about 5.9 million, which is up quite a bit from last year. And as a percentage of your expenditures, it's back over 100%. It was down around 75. A big reason for that is because at the end of fiscal 2020, there was about a million dollars set aside as being used for next year's budget. So that was assigned fund balance, not unassigned. So this year, there's nothing, nothing of that nature. So the, the full amount is in there. And I mean, the fund balance looks really good and healthy in the general fund. And then I can get to these in just a minute. Okay, so footnotes. Um, footnote number two is the uh, on page 29. We are required to report to the state if you have any budget overages. And then uh, if they're significant enough, the state will send you a letter and you have to reply to it. There was one that was significant because there was no final budget set aside for it. And that was in the coronavirus grant special revenue fund. There was some expenditure that occurred, but uh, the other ones are, there, there's about a half a dozen of them. Um, they were insignificant by state standards. So we what was the significant one? Can you back up and explain that? Yes, on the bottom, right on the bottom of page 29. One of the funds is called the Coronavirus Grant Special Revenue Fund. So there, there was no final budget amount for that, but there was actual expenditure in that fund of 57,000. Ben, where was that 50,000 again? Yeah, so what happened was um, as a remainder of the um, public safety grant program through the state, uh, the township received another check in, I don't know, it was April or April or May, of the $55,000. So that revenue went into um, that fund. And then we transferred expenditures for the firefighter salaries to offset that revenue. 
uh, but unfortunately I missed it during the budget amendment process. Um, so uh, that budget amendment wasn't made to recognize those firefighter salary expenditures in the uh, CARES Act fund rather than the fire. And is that an entirely separate issue than the specific East Precinct millage fund for patrol? Okay, thank you. And then the, uh, the other thing I was gonna mention was I mentioned the pension being a $2.2 million on page 50 you can kind of see a historical trend of your pension plan liability. Uh, at the end of 2021, it's 82% funded. So, I mean, the pension's in, in really good shape there. Yeah, these other fund balances and the other, the police library inspections and fire funds and improvement revolving haven't changed too much over the last year. Um, you can see the pathways funds has been going down over the last couple of years, and that's just expenditure of the of the money for the pathways. So that's that's good to see that one going down actually. So is there is there any questions that I can answer? You did receive ARPA funding that I, I didn't put, make notes on, but the ARPA money was um, was set aside this year. It was not spent. And it's included in your your uh, unavailable revenues at the end of the year. So when that does get spent, if it's over seven hundred fifty thousand, we'll have to do a, a single audit or a federal audit of that of the expenditures associated with that money. So that'll be a whole nother a whole nother level. And this annual audit is not a forensic audit, correct? That's correct. It's an audit of the financial statements. Correct. During your process, did you have access to our forensic audit? Um, I believe the last, I talked to Ben about that and have not seen the final report yet. I believe I last inquired about that. It may have been in May and there was still not a final report available. Is that? Am I, late May. Okay. Did so, you talk to Plant Moran at all or correspond with them? No. No, I, I think I looked at a draft of the report. When, when would that have been? Because I don't, we didn't see a draft at the board or it wasn't even released until May, right before the May 8th meeting. Was that the final or was that it's, a draft? You haven't seen the final. It's the, they came and did the presentation at the May 8th meeting. They haven't put final on it, but okay. the, <laughs> the changes that have been discussed are nominal. So essentially it's not okay. final, but. Substantively, it's pretty close. Okay. Um, but I don't think anyone saw a draft before that. No. Well, maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking of something else that I saw. But but um, I I talked to Ben about what was in it, what the the uh, the gist of the forensic audit was about, and didn't have any really concerns about the financial statement audit itself that was related to that. I have a few more questions. Sure. Uh, the Brownsfield development with the DDA, I didn't see anything in there on that. The DDA fund, I'm, I'm looking to see if we have a lot of detail on it. Oh yeah, back, way in the very, very back on page 94 and 95. is where the DDA fund is and all the activity related to that. Is the Brownfields in there? Yes. And then question on, um, supervisor expenses, you get into that stuff? Cause I've got the supervisor here. It looks like 10 times what she's really getting. That didn't get fixed. That doesn't appear to be fixed. Is this for 2000? Oh, we've, I guess it wasn't fixed yet, right? It should be this for the next 2021. year. Yes, 2021. Has that been fixed? Yeah, it was. Is uh, it separated? Was made for the 2022 budget. That was separated. Okay. okay. <laughs> so there's nothing here for me. Okay. And then you talk about management. Um, who did you contact as far as management or staff? Did you get a hold of our supervisor? 
There, treasurer. Yeah, certainly. Um, there's a letter that sent out with um, a questionnaire for any of the trustees to be able to answer. I did. I get some of those back. I don't get all of them back. So I certainly correspond with the, the treasurer and the clerk who are working in the office. On this, in the questionnaire? Oh, yes. That questionnaire comes out, Ben, with the, the engagement letter annually. Mm -hmm. And then as far as other staff goes, we, cor we, we solicit um, questionnaires from I, don't, I can't say the exact number, but it's a good number of the different employees throughout the township regarding any uh, concerns or anything that they have, but there, there weren't any listed on the, the replies we got back. Yeah, one thing in our financials that keeps coming back to get me is on the police fund, there's a transfer out to uh, quote other fund. And I don't know what other is and your reporting if there's been other transfers to the other fund and what the balance would be in the other fund and it's been there a couple of years and i'm just trying to get to the bottom of why that hasn't been changed to what it is how did you how did you deal with that Uh, if you look on the bottom of page 18, that's the the third column over is the police fund. Yes. So I don't see any transfers out there listed. That transfer was reversed at the direction of the Township Board for 2021. Is refund the same as reverse? Uh, I'm just using common language. So we actually, I don't think the transfer was ever made. So the the budget amendment reflected that transfer being removed from the budget for 2021. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I mean, we it, it was all reversed and gone before we ever saw the trial balances or anything. And the only way to reverse a transfer is to is to hit the cash of both sides of it. Because if it's a transfer from one fund, it has to be a transfer in another fund. Is the, to, the in and outs have to balance out. Right, is to what? I'm sorry, I just didn't hear you. So the only way to... The ins and outs have to balance. So if, it's a, if the transfer got reversed in one fund, it had to get reversed in the other fund. The only way to do that is through cash. Actual cash movement? Well, it's, it's all in pooled cash accounts, but yes. It comes out of the funds cash or into the funds cash. And did that happen, Manager Swayze? So I, I'll be honest, I can't recall if we did a, a transfer reversal or refund or if it was just removed from the budget. But in the end, the, the budget and the financial statements for 2021 reflect that there was no transfer from the police fund to the general fund. That's correct. Do you recall what the issues were with the forensic audit that were expressed to you that weren't concerning? No. Would it be helpful if you? I, I need to see that report at some point, yeah. So if that can get over to me, we certainly would consider those, yes. Yeah, I'm looking at your... Paragraph two, page two, professional standards require the consulting accountant to check with us to determine that the consultant has all the relevant facts. To our knowledge, there were no such consultations with other accountants. In some cases, management, which would include the board, I assume, may decide to consult with other accountants about auditing and accounting matters similar to obtaining a second opinion on certain situations. To our knowledge, there were no such consultations with other accountants. Well, these are in draft form, so I can change that if you would like, but the, the fact is that uh, management didn't consult with another CPA firm 
th this deals more with um, if they had consulted regarding accounting principles mm -hmm. that were being followed or not followed, which are the financial statement disclosures. So, so this is strictly also just related to financial statements and disclosures in those. So if the accounting firm, which is Plant Moran and is a CPA firm, and I'm not implying you, Jane, you can only, mm -hmm. you only know what, what is presented to you, mm -hmm. right? This mm -hmm. is not anything specialized internal control review, specifically about accounting practices, observations, possible risk recommendations. And this is simply about accounting practices if a consultant, if a consultation involves application of an accounting principle to townships financial statements or a determination of the type of auditor's opinion that may be expressed on those statements, then they're required to consult to check with you to determine that the, cons the consultant has all the relevant facts. To our knowledge, there were no such consultations with other accountants. This isn't on you, but if I were you, I think I'd want to see the plant Moran forensic audit. Oh, I for sure do. That's why yeah. I, I asked about it several times. Is there a timing issue, Grace? I mean, wasn't that yeah. plant Moran done, done in 2022 and these are the statements for 2021? Yeah, and it was about yeah. 2021 financials and we received it in 2022. Similar, like this is mm -hmm. 2021 financial statement financials and right. we're receiving, receiving it in 2022. Now. Correct, correct. So that seemed to coincide. But uh, I mean, likewise, plant never consulted with us about anything. Right, and I don't either. Need to, so yeah. Right. Manager Swayze, he needs a copy of that and all the attachments tomorrow. Maybe in his mailbox in the morning. Yeah. I think it, we might, it might be helpful for us to hear from you when you've had a chance to review that. Sure. Do you want me to correspond directly or through Ben or? I think directly would be preferred and you okay. can copy Ben on that. Okay. Be glad to. Thank you. All right. Is there anything else? All right, thank you. Thank you. Item 038-2022. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, how would this work then? What's your recommendation? Do you want us to, would you prefer that we accept this or would you like to wait pending your review of any other audits by Plant Moran so that you have an opportunity to change it? Um, well, this is still in draft form. Um, my intention was that it would be issued tonight. If, if you want to hold off on your action until I can look at that, I'll look at it tomorrow when I get it. So we don't have to delay too long. Okay. But yes. Thank you. That's all right. I would recommend that we, I make a motion that we wait until our accountant has had a chance to review the forensic audit from Plant Moran. I'll support that motion. Only makes sense. Do we need a motion or should we table it actually? Doesn't matter. Either way. It's a motion by Supervisor Lesperon, supported by Trustee Shipley, to not accept the, the um, annual audit at this time, pending your ability to review the forensic audit okay. by Plant Moran. Thank you. All right. Good. Thank you. Hopefully, we get the same answers the second time. I hope so. <laughs> Vote. I didn't even vote on that. I'm sorry. That's pretty sloppy. All in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Sorry about that, board. Item 038-2022. Resolution to exercise right of first refusal to purchase a tax foreclosed property. Manager Swayze. Great, thank you. So there is a piece of undeveloped property located at 2085 Spalding Avenue. <clears throat> Um, it has been tax foreclosed by Kent County due to non-payment of taxes from 2019 to 2021. So as a local government ju of jurisdiction, we are afforded the right of first refusal for the property by the General <laughs> Property Tax Act, and specifically MCL 21178M states that a city, village, or township may purchase for a public purpose any property located within that city, village, or township set forth in the judgment and subject to sale under this section by payment of the foreclosing government unit of the minimum bid. Uh, and the key word there is minimum bid, and I'll get there uh, in a second. Um, so we've been notified by the Office of the Treasurer that if we choose, we can exercise the right or first refusal and purchase this property. 
Uh, however, Public Acts 255 and 256 of 2020 changed the process by which the township can claim tax foreclosed property since the last time we went through this process. So essentially what the crux is, is those acts allow anybody that has a recorded interest in the property. So whether it's a formal property owner, um, whether it is a bank that has a lien on the property, if there's a notice of claim filed by the property owners, um, then the property can be purchased for the fair market value of the property, which is currently estimated at $70,400. So if there's no notice of claim made, uh, the township can claim and purchase the property for the taxes and fees slash penalties due, which is $5,808.21. Uh, so as spelled out in the enabling legislation, we can only purchase the property for a public purpose. It must declare what that property, what declare what that purpose is. So the subject property is 10.83 acres of undeveloped land on the western edge of the township. Both the strategic plan and the park's master plan that are being finalized uh, list the acquisition of parkland and preservation of undeveloped property as potential goals for the township. So the primary issue with this piece of property is lack of access. It's not situated on any public or private road. And should the township choose to claim and purchase the property, work will need to be done with the surrounding property owners uh, to develop potential access. Uh, so we must declare a public purpose in order to claim the property uh, if we would like to. And per the attached resolution, the public purpose is providing open space and the preservation of undeveloped property. So the cost of the township acquiring the property uh, will be either $70,400 approximately uh, if there's a notice of claim made or $5,808.21 if there's no notice of claim. Uh, so I drafted the resolution with two different paragraphs. That way the, the board tonight can decide if it wants to make a claim, whether or not to make a claim at either or both purchase prices. Uh, so the purchase of this property isn't specifically included in the fiscal year 22 budget. A budget amendment would need to be made should the township board choose to claim and purchase the property. Question. If a person files a notice of claim that has an interest for 70,400, do they automatically get it or can we bid more than that? So the only thing the notice of claim does is set the purchase price. So we still have the right of first refusal. So even if they, the time for them to get that has already passed. So if we decide that the township wants to purchase this property and the notice of claim is made, we still get to purchase it for $70,400. I'm using that number because that is what we have it valued at. I'm not sure if the county actually uses our exact number or not, but it'll be around that amount. So no one can buy it for more. I got a couple of questions. Ben, is this the same parcel that we received complaints on from some of the property owners back there? It is directly adjacent to it. So I'm going to... Because if I recall right, some of the concerns were it was clear cut and they had some erosion uh, concerns. So if you look at the map, I have it up now. Mm -hmm. um, so the parcel in blue is the one that we're talking about. That parcel has not been cut, has not been touched. Mm -hmm. uh, the parcel that we received the complaint about is the parcel immediately to the north. And you can kind of see the brown areas uh, where they have begun. Uh, the grading process for uh, the development there, uh, which is currently stalled. I've got a couple other comments, if it's appropriate. Of course. One of my big concerns is it's landlocked. So we got to work with the developer, property owner, and purchase potentially more property to get to it. Uh, my other concern is we have purchased property in not too distant past that we've done nothing with yet. And here's another parcel that we're considering potentially buying and possibly not doing anything with in the near future. At what point <laughs> do we start buying up all the vacant property in the township? I've, I've got a real concern about this uh, purchase offering based on those two major points, access, what's it going to cost us to get access? And number two, 
What are our plans other than keeping open space and green space? Yes. Ben, are we actually voting just to for the right of first refusal, or are we actually voting we're going to buy the property? What property you'll be voting one, that you're going to buy the property for one so, price or the other. Yeah. So the way the resolution is written. So if you guys only wanted to buy it, if it was the cheap price, you can take out the paragraph that says, you know, the, the $70,400. But uh, basically the results of the vote tonight will be given to the Kent County Treasurer's Office tomorrow uh, so they can make their preparation. We won't know if there's a notice of claim on the property until, until July 1. Uh, the uh, enabling legislation allows that claim to be made until then. And we have to vote before then on this? We can't wait to know if there's no as a claim. We have to. So that's why I designed it both ways. So you guys can say, well, if it's, if so if you guys said we're not interested at the 70,000, then in the resolution we would take before you approve it, we would strike out the paragraph that says you claim it for the 70,400. That way we'd only be purchasing it if it, if there's no notice of claim being made. Well, I, I share John's concerns and I'm curious, have we taught, do we have any idea how we would get access to that? So we don't at this point, um, you know, there it's fairly developed around there. So our options are limited. We would really be um, uh, restricted to working with the uh, developer on that property to the north to try to develop some type of access to it. And, and if we were able to work with that property owner, it might cost us another, what, 25, 50, $75,000 to get access to this parcel. And so that we yeah. are back in square one. Yeah, and you said that property is stalled. Right. So we're not likely to get it. So I don't know the the being stalled. Um, the the developer that is developing that property has several other developments in Kent County that they are doing right now, and they have dedicated their resources to building those developments. I think we're less likely to get it once this is once the developer has divided and built on it and made final plans. Right now it's a sand pit, so we're. So I will also note that, because uh, I stared the exact same concern that all of you share, um, if the preservation of open space uh, serves the public purpose, um, you know, talked about that with our legal counsel and they, their opinion was that it would. So if the property remained landlocked, and the township wanted to purchase just to make sure that it's not developed, that it remains undeveloped property, um, that uh, at least according to Foster Swift would qualify as public purpose under that. The southeast corner of that parcel, does that border Kentwood? The southwest? southwest. Or I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> yes, west. it does. So the whole western border of that parcel is Kentwood. So at the, okay, is that a park over there or does Kentwood have any? So that is a park, Northeast Park. That is a ball field. And we haven't looked into, have we looked into it all, the potential of connectivity with park to park or not really? We have not, nope. Then you get into another whole thing farther down the road about maintenance. Well, maybe. Maintenance park to park connected. You Just have to ask that. yourself if it has value, if it sits there yeah. undeveloped. I because think. we don't know, you know, that step might be quite a bit, quite a few years down the road. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. exactly and right. so if one of the goals is to preserve open space, does it have value for that? In my mind, it does. Mine too. Lower price. <clears throat> for 10 acres for 7,000 or, or what was it, Ben? 5,800. $5,800 for 10 acres. Yeah, that's a bargain. The strategic plan results from resident feedback has been overwhelming that that is a top priority. Although I agree that landlocked potential is, or the, the access issue is an issue. Well, is, is it actually landlocked if there's access via Kentwood, Kentwood's Park? Is Kentwood's Park public? It is. So it's not, it, it's just, we have to figure out the access and there's at least two routes that are not, that, that could be potential access. One well, through that undeveloped parcel that's already owned, but that's, well, it seems, it sounds like we don't have access via Cascade Township, but go around the street or on the corner and you have access via Kentwood. We just haven't flushed anything out. Right. But, but, but if that's a public park. Then so the, the, the question is, and it's hard to tell here, you know, how exactly are the borders of those 
you know, because there's a lot of properties that coalesce right there oh, okay. you know, immediately to the west. You have a private property. So we don't know it's a, if it's exactly contingent with Kentwood mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. That would be a, yeah, a nice thing to know. Can we, if we then approve it for those two prices for the 10 acres down there, and this is an approved use preservation creep, um, if access does become a problem, that was probably not worth a lot to somebody else, but maybe that neighbor, that neighboring, the developer certainly, if he develops, it's valuable to him to just extend that development. Mm -hmm. So could we sell it at a future time? So the, the key issue there is that the price that we sell it for, um, it's been determined uh, by the courts that profit is not a public purpose. Uh, so we wouldn't be able to turn around and flip it to somebody for a hundred or $150,000. Um, but we would be able to, um, we'd more than likely be able to, you know, work out something if it's going to uh, somebody else at the price we bought it. And there, there's the potential to uh, put it back into the auction as well. Um, I don't know if that's something that they've ever done before with a claim. So I'd have to work through the county with that, but. How do you define flip? Like what if, the, you know, we held on to it for a while look at, and then later on, is it still considered a flip? So you, you could probably make a case that, you know, the we, we would be able to make whatever the inflation is on it, right? Um, so if we saved it for 10 years and the, you know, the, you know, you could calculate the inflation rate and say, okay, we carried it, you know, that was part of our, our purchase price. But, you know, if, you know, two years from now we decide we're not doing it and we want to sell it for double what we picked it up for, um, that's probably not something we could do. How did that parcel behind Culver's and Makatawa Bank that's now those rows of um, it's high density, I think it's apartments or not condos, right behind Culver's. Mm -hmm. How did that get, that was before my time, but that as far as it still lacks public access and that's a high density housing unit. I don't understand how they were allowed to build that without direct public access. I mean, you've got that Culver's road and then you've got the little road behind Goldfish, but both of those are private. So that's how they have all uh, private road needed access on that. So our development rules require that if you have a private road, it's got to be you know deeded. Um, so they they develop that through the private road uh, portion of our ordinance. And our ordinance just on its own allows for that type of development with no with that parcel lacking direct public access itself. Because they have deeded access to the private portion of it, that part that goes around culvers or whatnot. So then they're considered having, it's just like having a private road coming off a of public street, which is 28th street. We have a lot of private roads like that in the township. And they're becoming problems now as, as we grow. Well, then in theory, the, the rationale would be the same. You have to just get deeded access through a private property potentially. That high density development to me is odd behind Culver's. Same. And, and then you've got emergency vehicles and school buses going on that. I don't understand that. Well, getting back to this, I mean, obviously for $5,800, it would be a, the proverbial steal. Um, um, but, you know, I share John's concern is where do we stop buying property? But I also understand we do have initiatives for open space and this is probably gonna fill in around it. Um, but if we don't have public access to it, the only people who really enjoy the benefits of it are those who are who live exactly adjacent to it. Now, if we could access it through Kentwood's public public park, uh, then that changes the, the, the equation because that means there is access to it. No, and, and looking at what developers are getting for a parcel of land now, we're not gonna get a parcel of land really cheap. Mm -hmm. And we can years. still sell it for that same price. Yes. Yeah. So it's, yeah. It's 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 a it's it's hard to it's hard to turn down when the price is right and the price is so right. Oh, I agree. If, if there was access to it, it'd be a totally different story. <laughs> well, uh, and there may be, and there could be access at some point, right, Ben? And we just don't know what that is yet at this point. We haven't looked into it. So we have the. But I guess the our our out here is that we have the ability to sell it anyway, and at least get our money back if we determine um, that we can't utilize it for any other public purposes and get public access, then we could sell it. 
And I would assume the only people who could develop it then would be the adjacent developer. If I lived in Tall Pines, what is that, Tall Pines or Abbeydale, mm -hmm. in any of those houses that backs up, that, that touches this 10 acres, and I had the opportunity to buy it for that price, I would work at Culver's to get the cash if I, because I don't make that much a supervisor, but no, anyway, it's a steal. Well, I mean, that is, that's a point too. We do have, we have Cascade residents that have access to this property. They'll just be walking through their backyards in order to get to it. And then enjoying their 10 acres of natural <laughs> beauty. It's kind of like when we, I mean, we eventually turned it into the cemetery, but for a long time, people that, you know, backed up to the undeveloped portion of the cemetery had six and a half acres of forest name in their backyard that only did they really only had access to unless you wanted to walk through the cemetery. I'll make a motion that we exercise our right of first refusal um, subject to the cost of the delinquent taxes of 580821. But are you saying then to exclude the higher, the secondary? Yes. Price? For all the reasons uh, John mentioned that, you know, that cost is more. Uh, and we don't know what it's going to cost to get an easement, but for $5,800, I don't think we can go wrong and we can sell it later. He's saying take spirit about the instrument. Well, my concern, Jim, is that we could also, even if we had to pay 70,000 for it, we could still sell it and get our 70,000 back. So whether we pay 5,800 or 70,000, we're, we're gonna be able to get those back. Yeah. Uh, but I do, I, I, I'm, I'm torn too, because I share John's concerns about w when do we stop buying parcels, but it is for a public purpose. And it is a high priority in the strategic plan what the people were wanting. So I, I think it's time to roll the dice on this. And if it doesn't work out, we can get our money back. But uh, this was something that the people wanted through the strategic plan. So does anyone have questions or about Trustee Kessel's specific motion? It just means we're striking the paragraph following. Yes. The second paragraph on page two of this resolution. So, which means you're willing to pay, this motion is the township would be willing to pay for it. 5,800, $5, but unwilling to pay the 70,000 if it came to that. That was a motion by trustee Kessel, seconded by Clerk Slater. Clerk Slater, or please call the roll. Well, Trust can I oh, ask sorry. a question yes. before then? Sorry, Tom. If this fails, is it over or can we have a second vote to, to see if we want to um, do it for either price? And, and then if that fails, then it means it's off the table, correct? Yeah, so if the motion fails, anybody can make a, another motion. Okay. Trustee Kessel. Yes. Treasurer Pierce. Yes. Trustee McDonald. No. Trustee Nardhook? No. Trustee Shipley? No. Clerk Slater? Yes. Supervisor Lesprince? No. Was that 4 3 passed? It got defeated. It's a, it's a 3 4 fail. Okay. No motion, Tom. Huh? With that motion. With, I, I'd like, and I know this is only because we can resell it, and this is an opportunity. I, I make a motion that we exercise the right first refusal to purchase the foreclosed property at, at either price. And I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay. Clerk Slater, please call the roll. Treasurer Pierce. No. Trustee Kessel. No. Trustee Shipley. Absolutely not. Trustee Nordhook. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Clerk Slater. No. Supervisor Lesprins. Yes. So that fails. <coughs> so that literally means the township is turning down the opportunity to buy it for for seventy thousand or for any price. 
Is there anything else? Is that it, Ben? Is, have we reached the end of the motion road? You can make any other motions that you want. You can restate the first motion. You can restate the second motion. Um, if there's no motions, then we move on to other uh, business. Is anyone willing to purchase the property for 50? Oh, I guess that yeah. was trust. Well, then I would like to, if we can restate the motion, I'd like to restate Jim's motion that we uh, approve, exercise the right first refusal to purchase the property for only the $1,500 amount. Can you um, restate the same motion that just failed? I think so, yes. I guess you can because it's just all yeah. advisory. <laughs> Sorry, Tom, can you repeat? Um, I make a motion that we exercise the right of first reviews with the purchase of the tax foreclosed property as Jim had initially stated for the 50 under, approximately $1,500. Support. So that's a motion by Trustee McDonald supported by Trustee Kessel. To, to, exercise, to right. exercise the first right of refusal as previously stated by Trustee Kessel. Works later, please call the roll. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Nordhook. Yes. Trustee Shipley. No. Trustee Kessel. Yes. Treasurer Pierce. No. Clerk Slater. Yes. Supervisor Lesperance. Yes. Yes. Let's hope we can get it for $5,000, 10 acres. And then what are you gonna do with it? Yeah. It's called rolling the dice. Pretty low risk. Dice are loaded. We'll put a trusty park there. How about that? <laughs> Don't put mine in there. <laughs> trusty Shipley and all his buddies. Item 039, 2022. Uh, resolution authorizing issuance of 2022 capital improvement bonds. Andrew Swayze. Yep, so at the May 11th, 2022 board meeting, uh, the fire department design team, Williams Architects and Triangle Construction presented the design development documents and updated estimated budget for fire station number one project. Uh, at the meeting, the township board authorized construction document development bidding phase of the project, which will culminate in the review and consideration of bids of the project uh, in August or early September. Uh, it's anticipated that if the project's approved, construction will commence in early fall and take approximately one year, depending on material procurement timelines. So the Township Board has also indicated that bonds will be issued as part of the funding for the project. Uh, to this end, the Board has already adopted a resolution of intent to issue bonds, as well as approving professional service agreements for bond counsel and financial advisory services. So the next step of the process is the adoption of the resolution authorizing the issuance of the 2022 capital improvement bonds. The resolution is still uh, drafted with the full initial budgetary amount, $9.8 <laughs> million, uh, uh, included to allow the Township Board the greatest amount of latitude when deciding the final bond amount <clears throat> term uh, should be. Uh, the Township Supervisor and Township Clerk are designated as the authorized officer to make uh, the final determination on the bond documents once the final project cost is reasonably known and the final amortization analysis has been conducted with the township board. Uh, so included for your review are the proposed resolution authorizing the issuance of the 2022 capital improvement bonds, as well as the building <coughs> schedule. Uh, so the proposed schedule calls for the final sizing of the bonds to be determined by the week of August 8th. Uh, the staff will work with financial advisors to prepare various bonding amortization schedules, and the funding proposals will be up for consideration in late June and early July, so a decision can be made prior to the week of August 8th. And the resolution spells out various bonding details as required by Public Act 34 of 2001, contains quite a bit of information. Uh, so if the bond does choose to issue the bonds and accept bids, it's anticipated the transaction will take place in late summer of 2022. And once the transaction takes place, it allows the township three years to complete the projects uh, that were bonded for. Uh, again, approving the resolution does not obligate the costs other than those that have already been approved by the township board and further financial analysis on the bond issuance will be provided uh, later in the process uh, before it's final finalized. Including the amount, right? Correct. Motion, questions? Okay. Then did I see somewhere in here, and I can't find it again, that any excess money from this can be used for other other 
expenses were transferred somewhere? No, definitely cannot. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I had said, saw somewhere in there. Yeah, and it's very clear, you know, so it lays out everything based on the act. So we actually have to have a construction fund for this project. Those uh, amounts have to be put into that fund. Specifically. And only used for that. Only used for this project. That, that's, maybe I had too much heat or something when I wrote <laughs> so. Okay, thanks, Ben. I make a motion to approve uh, the... I, I have a couple comments here first. Uh, I think I'm going where John was on number 14 of the construction fund. I'll just get to that. Um, where it says any monies remaining in the construction fund after payment of all such costs shall be transferred to the bond payment fund. Mm -hmm. And after completion of the improvements, any dissipation of the remaining bond proceeds um, the, let's see what if monies can be deposited. Any unexpected balance shall be used for such purposes as allowed by law. I don't want that sentence in there. I, I, I don't want it for any such purposes as allowed by law. I want it to go to the construction fund to pay bonds. But I don't want anybody raiding this fund. But isn't doesn't the law specifically say that the monies have to be used in this? Yes. But then it also says any unexpected balance shall be used for such purposes as allowed by law. To me, that opens the door for this to be raided, and I don't want that door open. So not being a finance expert, um, I would circle back with our finance experts, but my understanding is that the use that is allowed by law is to pay the bonds. I would um, like, so that's I why it like, has to be transferred. I to would like our attorney the to fund. say that that money can't be rated out of this fund. So I guess I, I would, instead of just taking that out there, I would rather list what the purposes are allowed by law, just so it's in, still in there. It's just more defined. So it was, it was saying, I don't want to just be pulled out to pay somebody's salary. Any unexpected balance shall be used for the purposes as allowed by law, which are, and that will be listed exactly okay. what the purposes are. I'd like to review those before we pass this. I want to see what those are. And then under number 20, authorized officer, it brings our township clerk and township supervisor either one acting alone mm -hmm. um, no I would like to see our township treasurer and our township supervisor with consensus on changing anything on here and I'd like to get our legal opinion on that I don't want any one person doing it we're going to make changes I want unanimous decision and I think our treasurer should be involved in that. That's all I have. Um, Manager Swayze, if we were to wait and bring this up at the next meeting, are we in the point? Are we at a point with the in the phase of the construction that it won't? Yeah, we're fine. If the okay. board wants to table it and bring it back to the July thirteenth meeting, we'll be okay. 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 I just don't want to stop the bulldozers from tearing down the whole place. Right. Is your answer the same if we word it that way? What's that? Nobody's schedule changes. Nobody's schedule changes. No I mean, firefighters nice thing, are going to have to wait. The nice thing about this is the board is considering paying cash for part of it. So there's already money funding the first part of that. But the bonds will be sold and the money will be in hand long before. Uh, so we can table this without jeopardizing anything. Yep. Thank you. So to follow Timmy's point, authorized officer in 20, it's also in 11, number 11, just soon. It says any two of supervisor, clerk, and treasurer. So I guess as long as that's any two, that's fine, right? I just assume it'd be treasurer and supervisor, but if that's the way it is. 
And I would use this opportunity to put on the treasurer's plate um, special assessment district roles also, <laughs> and give him the certification. <laughs> right. Okay, do we know who drafted this, Ben? I, council or financial advisor or both? Uh, Chuck Barbary from, no, not Chuck. The other one. Scott Hogan. Scott Hogan from Foster Swift did the draft. Okay. I'll make a motion to table then until Ben can get clarification of those points raised tonight. Support. It's a motion by Trustee Kessel to table this agenda item, supported by Trustee Shipley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next up, 040-2022, appointments to the Cascade Township Pathway Committee. So this one is mine. Supervisor makes the appointments, the board approves. Um, the Pathway Committee informally was without any structure or formality voting rights, I guess was in place several years ago. Um, pathways maintenance and possible expansion has been very uh, no, well, yeah, but public, uh, popular just topic. And so under the terms of the committee structure, the I think we found some really great residents that were willing to serve on the committee. Um, John Driscoll would be the first of the four residents at large. He is retired from at and I believe, right? With an engineering background. And he came to all of the strategic planning meetings, uh, the four public meetings, and then expressed his interest uh, in serving on the pathway committee. He seems very fiscally responsible. He knows about building pathways. He's a really good one. Next up, Jeff Coffey. He also um, reached out with some pathway concerns, but real reasonable, about three spots that he had troubled with on his bike. And he owns Thornapple Brewing Company, loves the pathways, lives in Cascade, and was willing to serve on the committee. Next would be Rick Brown. He is a retired hospital administrative uh, executive, longtime resident, loves the pathways, and he reached out um, with a couple thoughts and questions. One was a, an area of the pathway over by off Buttrick near 30th. Um, there's a spot where it comes up against a bridge and there's a, he said he almost lost his lunch. Um, so he brought up a couple places that were helpful and easy repairs. And then he also showed up at a parks committee meeting and had some real um, simple solutions to some of the big erosion problems that are going on at Peace Park. Whereas our engineer had proposed several possible solutions in the thousands and thousands of dollars. So he's a great asset. And last up, Chris Taylor, very involved in the pathways. You guys have all heard from him at meetings. He was involved in the fire station discussions. And I think he used to write the articles on the last page of the newsletter about the pathway. So he and his wife have volunteer, voluntarily picked up along the pathways for years. He's written with our buildings and grounds director, um, just very involved and will be a good asset too. Then as required, the planning commission member, Scott Rizzi, just a few meetings ago, if you remember the median issue by Ken Rob, the neighborhood off Cascade, where we had it on our agenda to do a, a, a median in the middle of the road, but then it was Mr. Rizzi's idea to just simply extend the pathway on that side of the road, 12, 1400 feet to get us to the crosswalk, which works out way better isn't any more expensive and just much safer. So he's great. Parks Committee, Mike Reese, um, he is a parks and rec planner by, by trade. He's been a fantastic asset to the Parks Committee. And then last, the board appointment, I put myself on as supervisor and no one here expressed, reached out wanting to serve. And I think the supervisor being on it just sh um, shows how important a committee is, but certainly these are subject to the Open Meetings Act. Everybody is, I hope everyone attends. So I don't mean that to be um, exclusive. I just. I make a motion to approve the appointments. 
So put forward. Should I have just said nothing and did it? No, I like that, that you that you gave us background on everybody. I thought yeah. that was really good. Well, you guys were very patient to listen. No, to that me. was no, that was very helpful. Too. Yeah, we've got a fantastic committee. I agree. All right, thanks, Tom. I was sweating it. I didn't mean to exclude you. I just no. uh, really wanted to be on it. No, I think it's good. I I'm, I make a motion to approve the appointments. And exactly. I hope, I hope you come. Nice support. So motion by Trustee McDonald, supported by Trustee Kessel to approve the Pathway Committee appointments. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thanks for listening to that. Next, oh. Article 10, discussion. Any board members want to add anything to the discussion? <clears throat> Is that a hand, Trustee Nordok, or just... <laughs> I'm just thinking, Mr. Merlin, he wanted those numbers so it's committed and uncommitted and restricted and non-restricted funds for, for quite a while. I, I've heard him ask for those before. I'd really like to make sure we get it to him this time. Thank you. Help me too, because that email's in my inbox. So yeah. do we have manager comments? I think that's next. next after discussion or after public comments. I was only going to say thanks to Ben and uh, uh, Eagle and everybody else for getting the SAD uh, moving forward. And it sounds like we're going to get some uh, relief on the river yet this year. How, is the, how are those meetings going? They're going fine, the ones that I've attended. <laughs> right. They're going fine. I mean, do you want to go into my, well, I think it's a couple of comments first. Any other? Let's move on to manager comments. We have Article 11. Yeah, go to public comments. Oh, I'm sorry. Article 11, public comments. Mr. Whitley, don't make us look bad. No, not at all. Uh, Chuck Whitley, 5030 Sequoia Drive. Uh, the question about how the, the SAD committee meetings are going, uh, I'd like to say that they're going very nicely. Uh, there's just been nothing but positive, uh, you know, support from the, the various members and uh, I'm, you know, happy to be there and Everyone else is chipping in and uh, it, it's working out just fine. Great. So, thank you. Thank you. Oh, Ms. England. In England, 3415 Glenstone Court. Um, since we have elections coming up starting August 2nd, I just had a question about our voting machines. Did I hear two meetings ago that we spent money on new voting machines? Not this year. Did did we do that? Not this year. Was it last year? Two years ago. Two years ago. <laughs> okay. I myself had issues with that voting in 2020. I was given a Sharpie and my ballot did get spoiled. Are we using Dominion machines that appear to be a little bit controversial or are we using a different sort of a machine? We're using Dominion and um, we're using Sharpies per instructions from the county. Okay. Can we use uh, pens instead? Yeah, that was, I wasn't the only person that had a problem with that. So, um, you know, with those machines, it seems like there's a bit of a controversy about those. Is there any concern about that here using the, those machines? No, they're not hackable or changeable or. I don't know anything, but you're not alone. Okay. I know that there are some concerns about that in the community for sure. Yeah. So if that's something that maybe we could take a look at. Is it the exact same physical machine? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a public testing of, mach of the machines that you're welcome to come to at the end of July. Okay. You can see for yourself. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. How do we get the information on that? Is it on our website or? It will be on our website on the under election commission. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We do have one so far, Mr. Merlin. Um, Craig Merlin, 6333 Thorn Hills Court. Um, it would be helpful to me for someone to explain how the actual offering process will occur. Will there be an official disclosure document, an official statement is what they're called. And if so, who drafts it? And will we be receiving 
a what is called in the trade essentially a negative assurance 10b5 opinion from someone on the disclosure there there have been a lot of actions in cascade that have raised questions the forensic audit has shown some of them i know um other people as well as myself have found some other questionable practices in cascade are those going to be included um, in disclosure of that. So how will all of this process occur? And the final question, is this a best efforts or a firm commitment placement when it occurs? Manager Swayze or? Yep, so there certainly is a disclosure um, document that's being developed. I actually sent a bucket load of information to our um, financial advisor just this week. Uh, so they are working on that, uh, including our, our, our audit. Um, the, the placement hasn't been decided yet. So our past couple uh, issues, we've been able to do a private placement. I don't know if this will be a public or private offering yet or not. Uh, our financial advisor will advise us of that um, uh, when that comes out. Some of those other questions are beyond my skill set. So I could certainly um, ask our bond council about that and get back to the, the township. Do you feel like you have a good enough, would you like Mr. Merlin to put those in email to us or is, did you understand it? So I definitely, I, I reference the recordings to the meetings all the time, so I can do that. But if Mr. Merlin has any other questions that he wants uh, information on, I'm, I'm more than happy to get that from the FA. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions or comments? Any, if anyone else on Zoom would like to speak, please raise your hand. And Mr. Merlin, if you have any follow-up questions or want to clarify, that's fine too. I don't, I don't see any more hands. Article 12, manager comments. All right, so I've been able to check off a couple of my items already. We already <laughs> talked about the deer. Uh, we talked about uh, Egypt Creek. Talked a little bit about the river treatment, but we are starting river treatments this week. Uh, so it happened fast. We got our permit from Eagle uh, on Monday. Uh, and treatment's happening Thursday. Um, all of the required notices were already sent out to the property owners. In addition, we've been updating our website. Uh, we have an e-blast where we invited people to sign up for, um, and uh, we put it out on social media as well. So anybody that has property within 100 feet of a treatment area will also get, uh, just like if you have your grass sprayed, you get a little thing in your um, yard. Uh, it has, um, it talks about the restrictions. So there's a one day uh, swimming restriction and a three day irrigation restriction. Um, the irrigation restriction is really so you don't kill your grass with the irrigation water, uh, but all of that is out there. Um, and then the I uh, really wanted to get this done kind of before we got into the two weeks of 4th of July holiday um, to make sure there's no restrictions as that's happening. So um, the contractor is putting together kind of the rest of the year schedule now. Uh, we make sure that gets out to everybody, um, but things are going good. And I appreciate Mr. Whitley and Trustee Shipley's um, comments as well. Um, and then wanted to say that our local streets projects are starting uh, this week as well. So right, uh, the first step through the process is the raising and lowering of manholes. Uh, so they're starting down at the south end of the township where we approved the Tannen Court area uh, and they'll kind of work their way up on Apple River Drive. And then we have one little leg up at the northern part of the township where it'll be the last one. But those projects will take place over the next uh, two to three weeks. Uh, so we'll get some uh, repaved uh, roads. Um, and then hopefully, I know I sent out an email, hopefully you guys saw the news, but uh, we've uh, through uh, Representative Meyer's office obtained the remaining uh, money that we need for phase two of our PFAS remediation project. Um, so it was great news. Uh, obviously getting clean water to our residents is super important and uh, we now have the funding in place to, to do that. Um, that being said, it probably alters our conversation that we had with legal counsel uh, a couple of meetings ago. Uh, so he is up, uh, working on an updated letter for the, the board uh, we'll disseminate that here shortly. Um, and then if you guys want to ask more questions to him about what's still, uh, what process are still out there, we'll invite him to a, an upcoming. Thanks. 
part of that money, is it going to be reimbursing the township for their temporary remediation for those people? So it is not. So that's one of the remaining costs that are still hanging out there. We have that cost. Uh, we actually obviously have the legal costs that we've uh, put into it. Uh, a couple other things that I've discussed with uh, uh, Mr. Van Essen. So those are still things that we need to, to figure out. Has it not been approved by the all the government entities? It's been approved by the House. It hasn't been passed by the Senate yet. Uh, we've been assured by uh, Meyer's office that it is um, you know, just housekeeping at this point to get it approved. Uh, the way government works, I wouldn't necessarily uh, take that as gospel, but um, it's he's confident enough that we're getting it that he was willing to put out press releases. And do it for that reason. Is that it? Thanks. Uh, Article 13, board member comments. Always stand up and thank you guys for coming. Please bring your neighbors back. It's nice to see familiar faces, but it's also great to see new faces. And Eagle Creek, of course, where Ben's on top of that, and PFOS is uh, on top of that too. So thanks everybody, and thanks out there in TV land, wherever you're at. Any other comments or a motion to adjourn? I make motion to adjourn with business being completed on this day. Support. It's a motion by Trustee Shipley to adjourn, supported by Trustee McDonald. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? They are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for coming.